Hey, let's take a look at solving some polynomial equations that are sort of complicated. Now, we'll start off by just looking for real solutions to polynomial equations. So here's an example. Let's take a look at this polynomial equation, 5x to the fourth plus 10x cubed plus 5x squared equals 0. And I want to find the solutions. So how do I go about doing this? Well, the first thing I always do when I see a polynomial is ask, can I factor it? If I can factor it, I actually have a really good shot at trying to find the solutions. Well, here, actually, I'm in great luck because I see there's a common factor in every term. First of all, there's a 5 factor in every term, but there's also an x squared factor in every turn, turn. So I can factor out a 5x squared. So let's do that right now together. So if we factor out a 5x squared, what am I left with? Well, in this piece here, I'm left with x squared plus 2x here. And here I'm just left with a plus 1 equals 0. Classic mistake is to say, oh, if I factor out a 5x squared, there'll be nothing left here. Well, if there's nothing left, then when I distribute, I won't get that term. I need something there to tell me to put a 5x squared there, and that 1 does it. Because 5x squared times 1 gives me the 5x squared when I distribute. Anyway, there we have it. And now I've got a little quadratic. Hey, if that quadratic can be factored, then I'm in really good shape. Well, let's hope for the best. Oh, think factored thoughts. Let's give it a shot. So I'll put an x here and an x here. I need two numbers, two positive numbers that multiply to give 1, but add to give 2. Well, there I have it. So what are my possible solutions? Well, either this factor equals 0, or this factor equals 0, or this factor equals 0. So either 5x squared equals 0, dividing both sides by 5, I see x squared equals 0, which means x equals 0. So either x equals 0, or uh, x plus 1 equals 0, subtracting 1 from both sides, I see x equals negative 1. Or x plus 1 equals 0, which just gives me another copy of x equals negative 1. And so I see there are two solutions, x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. And now you can actually check this. You can actually check this if you want on a graphing calculator. All you have to do is type in the function y equals 5x to the fourth plus 10x cubed plus 5x squared and graph it and, and sort of look and see where it crosses the x-axis, where the zeros are. And if you do that, you can see there's the graph. And if you actually produce a little table of values, there's the table. And sure enough, you can see it's 0 precisely when x equals 0 and x equals negative 1. So we are home free. Let's try another example. Here's one I think you might enjoy. x to the fourth minus 26x squared equals negative 25. Very, very, very first thing I do is I want things to equal 0 so I can try to factor. So I'm going to bring everything over to the left-hand side by adding 25 to both sides. And when I do that, here's what I see. I see x to the fourth minus 26x squared plus 25 equals 0. Now, I'm going to show you an incredible trick. I've got to tell you, I think this is great. I look at this, and you know what I see? I actually see, in some kind of crazy sense, a quadratic. Let me show you what I mean. This is really weird, so you've got you to hang with me here. And you're saying, what? Is he's lost his mind? But I don't think I did. Because now I'll just fill in everything. And look at the purple. There's some green thing squared minus 26 times the green thing plus 25 equals 0. Well, it turns out if I just think of the green thing as a variable, like call it w or call it z, it really is x squared, then, in fact, I can factor this as a quadratic. Let's try it. Now, this is really sort of sneaky, but I've got to tell you, I love it. Well, first of all, if I'm going to factor the green thing squared, I'm going to have the green thing here and the green thing here. So I'm going to have the green thing here and the green thing here. Right? Green thing times green thing is green thing squared. Good. Now, uh, let's see if we can break up the 25. I've got to think of two numbers, two negative numbers. whose product is 25 
And yet, when you combine them and add them, you get a negative 26. Well, that's going to be 25 and 1. Let's see if this really works. And this really was sort of a hidden quadratic. Green times green is green squared. That's good. Outer terms are negative 25 green. Inside terms is negative uh, green. That's negative 26 green. And negative 1 times negative 25 is 25. It's actually checks. The key thing here is that when I see x to the fourth and then I see x squared, I think of x to the fourth as x squared all squared. So really this is junk squared minus 26 junk plus 25, and now I can factor it. But now I can factor more because this little piece right here is the difference of two perfect squares, and this is the difference of two perfect squares. And so now if I bring the green back, factor on the green and not in between, Oh, I'm so funny. Don't you love me? All right, x plus 1, x minus 1, x plus 5, x minus 5. And therefore, there are lots of possibilities. Either this factor is 0, this factor is 0, this factor is 0, this factor is 0. If this factor is 0, that means that x equals negative 1. If this factor is 0, that means x equals 1. If this factor is 0, x equals negative 5. If this factor is 0, x equals 5. And so we see there are four solutions, x equals plus or minus 1 and x equals plus or minus 5. Those are the four solutions to this quartic. And you can see the way I did it was to first sort of squint my eyes and realize there's a quadratic I can factor in x squared, and then I factored the x squareds themselves. Phew.